On this week's boiler tip, we're going to look at some quick temperature and other diagnostic tools we can use to ensure our deaerator is working correctly. Um, a lot of times the deaerator is insulated, but even if it is, we can usually find a manway cover or some piping on the outlet of the vent that's not. So taking a temperature with a thermal imaging camera is great, but even just a point and shoot temperature reader doesn't hurt. If we're hot in the top of the deaerator and we're cold on the bottom and we didn't just start up the deaerator, there's a good chance that we're not keeping up with steam when we're making up water. If we're cold on the top of the deaerator, um, it could indicate that we're not getting rid of the air. But another really neat way to verify that our deaerator is working correctly is a chemistry test. I know everybody gets excited about a chemistry test. But the chemical that we're going to be looking at is, so, is sulfite. Um, sulfite is an oxygen scavenger. Now, if a deaerator is working correctly, we're getting our pressure 5 to 7 PSI, and we're getting our temperature, you know, 227 or so degrees, then we're probably doing okay. Um, and that deaerator, in proper operation, can remove oxygen down to parts per billion. Um, what we're doing to get rid of the rest of that oxygen is we're adding sulfite. So sulfite held at um, a certain concentration, typically we look for 30 to 60 parts per million in the boiler as an indication that we've got protection, but how much sulfite we have to add is an indication of how the boiler, how the deaerator is functioning. Um, if a deaerator stops working, for whatever reason, we're gonna see those sulfite levels fall. Because now, instead of getting to the parts per billion, we're, we could be running several parts per million. Now that's going to drastically increase our sulfite usage. So if I go in and I do my daily sulfite test and that level's low in the boiler, I may just jack up the pump because you know we have to protect the equipment. But it's kind of a canary in a coal mine. That's going to cause me to take a closer look at the DA and say, well, what's changed there? Are we not keeping up on steam? Do, are we not getting rid of air? Do we have some other issue? Maybe we ran out of sulfite at the tank. But if everything's normal on the chemical delivery side and we're using more, it's a dead giveaway that our deaerator is not working correctly. So we're going to do those basic checks. Are we maintaining pressure even when we're making up high volumes of water? Um, is our spray nozzle intact, uh, things like that. So there's a lot going on in here. And if we don't take the opportunity when we get a chance to pop a manway and look in there, we don't even know what it's supposed to look like in there. We could have upset trays in a tray type deaerator. We could have a spray nozzle issue. We could have this thing rust a hole in it and fall apart. Um, you know, the internals aren't obvious on the outside of a deaerator. And if we never look at them, we don't know what we're looking at when we open it. So if we can get a chance, take it, and then we've got a better position to troubleshoot from in the future. Mm -hmm.